1961, when um, I was born, Yuri Gagarin was launched in space, and he was the first. And my parents were so inspired by, uh, by this amazing technological achievement that they called me Yuri. <laughs> the second person who really inspired me and influenced a significant portion of my life was Richard Feynman. And um, of course, I read his uh, lectures in physics that were at the time translated in Russian, and I decided to become a physicist. Unfortunately, what I did not know is that his genius is not being transferred through reading his lectures. <laughs> and uh, having spent uh, 10 years of my life uh, really doing physics, theoretical physics, I uh, realized that I'm not good enough. And what do you do when you realize that you are not a good scientist? You become uh, a financier. So I went to the <laughs> finance. And, uh, and there I became uh, a little more lucky. And uh, after many iterations, I uh, be became investor in technology companies and uh, invested in companies like Facebook, Twitter, and the others. So Richard Feynman once was asked, uh, does he believe that there are extraterrestrial civilizations and other life in the universe? And he said, yes, but we don't know anything about it. And of course he was right, because at the time we really did not know much. But now, Due to this machine, which is called Kepler Telescope, that was launched by NASA a few years ago, we know that there is an incredible number of planets like Earth uh, just in our galaxy alone. So some estimates indicate that there are up to 40 billion planets like that. And of course, there are about 200 billion galaxies in the universe. So now, all of a sudden, uh, we have a scientific fact underlying uh, those huge uh, numbers that cannot be ignored. So even before Kepler mission, some of the brave people used radio telescopes to look for intelligent life in the universe. Incidentally, around the same year that I was born, Frank Drake uh, used a uh, small size telescope in uh, Virginia uh, to do the first search for the signal. And uh, also in the same year that I was born, he convened a gathering at the same location of all experts in the field, and there were 11 of them. <laughs> I have to say that 55 years later, there's pretty much similar number of, uh, of experts in this field in spite of the incredible results of the Kepler mission. So what, um, uh, what I decided to do is uh, to connect the dots. Um, and the, the, uh, uh, the dots were Yuri Gagarin, Richard Feynman. And then the last one was that when we decided to move to California and bought our house, uh, I invited Frank Drake. Uh, to have a conversation with him, and he told me that this was the house that belonged to Packard, who was the founder of HP, and Packard was the biggest supporter of uh, something that was called SETI, which is Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. So all of a sudden I realized that I have responsibility to relaunch this effort. And that's what uh, we did last year, uh, supported by the brilliant minds like Stephen Hawking and Martin Rees and Frank Drake, and uh, with the help of an incredible team of young scientists from uh, Berkeley, we relaunched this effort. Um, and uh, the amazing thing is that because of the advances of uh, computer science and uh, the, the hardware and the software, we now can do the search uh, about 1,000 times faster. So in one day, we can collect with the same equipment as much data as any previous search in, in a year. So we, uh, 
we're using the most sophisticated equipment that we have. And uh, uh, this one is uh, located in the same place where Frank Drake did his first search. But of course, this is much bigger. This is the size of the football field. And this is the biggest radio telescope in the United States. And uh, we have been fortunate that we've been able to have a partnership with them so that they allow us to use this amazing machine now to search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And um, I can report today that a few days ago we did our first observation and did not find anything, but <laughs> we... <laughs> but we keep going because the, the program is designed uh, for 10 years. So this is um, the second uh, telescope that we're using right now, which is the largest one in the Southern Hemisphere and it's located in Parks, Australia. And uh, this is the th third instrument, which is a specially designed, uh, um, specially designed machine for looking for laser signals. Of course, you might ask a question, you know, if there is a life uh, um, somewhere in the universe, what, are gonna, what exactly they will use to communicate? And the answer is very simple. They're going to use massless particle because this is the one that can uh, go at the speed of light. Uh, and the massless particle we have is basically photons. So they will have to use photons. And if you go into all kinds of uh, deep physics, uh, it's pretty much constrained to radio wave spectrum and the laser spectrum. And that's exactly what we're doing. So the Lick Observatory is, uh, is working in the laser spectrum, looking for a laser signal. So what uh, our program involves is, uh, in the next 10 years, looking for the signal from a million nearby stars, uh, galactic center of the Milky Way, and the whole Milky Way plane, because if you look at the plane of the Milky Way, of course, in your line of sight, there are many different stars and planets. We will also look at the 100 nearby galaxies, which, uh, which is a much safer exercise because they are so much further away from us. And, um, and actually, it's pretty interesting because um, you can uh, easily see the signal coming from the galaxy because it's so small in the sky. So you will probably ask a question, what makes us believe that they have enough power to send a signal that we can detect? So the amazing uh, result is that we now already have instruments that are sending signals routinely every day just uh, by purely tracking airplanes our radars are visible about a thousand light years away from our planet. And if we take the largest uh, radio telescope that we have, which is located in Puerto Rico, called Arecibo, this one can be visible throughout the galaxy. So the conclusion is that they don't have to be much more advanced than us technologically for us to be able to see the signal. Of course, it should have been sent maybe at 10, 20 or 50,000 years ago. So to summarize, we will conduct the most comprehensive search uh, in history, and we will do it much faster using more sensitive equipment and covering the broader spectrum. Uh, for the first time in that type of a project, we will open all the data uh, to the public so that they can search for the signal as well. And uh, we will also open the software so that other telescopes can use it. So the project will take 10 years. And uh, I committed $100 million to try to see it through. Thank you very much.